Welcome to the Health and Wellness Marketplace. Here's your host, Laura Lewis. Hello and welcome to the Health and Wellness Marketplace. I'm your host, Laura Lewis. We're so glad you joined us today. Stopping in the marketplace today is Richard Lentz, founder and president of Seagate. Seagate is one of the top supplement manufacturers in the world, and they have a wide variety of natural alternatives. One of the most intriguing of these natural remedies to me is the olive leaf. Richard, thanks for coming in today. Thank you for How are me. you? Fine, thank you. Okay, good. Now, I've read that olive leaf is one of the most potent natural remedies for all sorts of afflictions like colds and flu and bacteria and fungi. fungi. Is it fungi? Or fun fungi. So, so Richard, what, what does the research say about olive leaf and how it can affect these? Well, we wrote articles because as some of the viewers that have seen me before know, we're not allowed to, to really make these claims ourselves as a manufacturer. Mm -hmm. But we have Dr. Morton Walker, who wrote an article for Better Nutrition a couple of years ago, wrote, Olive leaves are for the one true natural and non-toxic way to eliminate illnesses arising from viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeast, protozoa, worms, flukes, and other parasites. Ingredients in olive leaves work against those specific microbes causing herpes, skin diseases, candidiasis, flu, and even the common cold. Oh, I don't like that list right there. Vi viruses, bacteria, fungi, yeast, protozoa, worms, flukes, and parasites. If you get Dr. Walker's book, and it's a little paperback, I think it costs all of 6 or $7 in a health food store. Um, when I read that thing, I, I didn't believe it myself because there's about, it's 90 pages of almost everything that's out there, it will kill. Mm -hmm. And so we had the opportunity. We tried the olive leaf nasal spray, which I'll go into later, against a lot of the bacteria and the molds and the fungi, and it actually worked. And the things that you can test against, you can't really test against viri because the viri viri you're talking about viruses viruses yeah that's plural right is yeah. that plural okay yeah, i don't know if that singular? was incorrect okay <laughs> yeah it was like fungi okay. funguses fungi. okay okay yeah. all right so viruses viruses sounds all right. better i came from new york originally viruses <laughs> virus <laughs> can't tell you came from new york by the way not at all no. <laughs> i originally was by the way okay so. uh but no the Dr. Walker has been probably the most published person in the industry on the use of olive leaf extract. And about three years ago, he did a, an analysis of Seagate's olive leaf extract, which he wrote in the Townsend Letter. Um, if anybody wants a copy of this reprint, they're welcome to call our office and we'll send it out to them with our information packet. So just mm -hmm. ask for it specifically. And it says the olive leaf, leaf extract antimicrobial therapy. Okay. And he interviewed people and doctors and clinics that were using the Seagate olive leaf extract, and um, those are the results. We didn't, we didn't have much to do with that analysis. But to have Dr. Walker take an interest, he found us on his own uh, years ago and started taking it himself, using it on some of his patients, and decided, eh, I would want to get a hold of Seagate because this product seems to be the most potent one that he had tested. Wonderful, so, wonderful yeah, for having, you. Yeah, behind it was great. Well, um, you know, your company, Seagate, is a farming and fishing company, and your, your supply of all, you supply all of your own raw materials to your factory. Is this what sets you apart from the other olive leaf extracts in the market primarily? Is that why he would think that yours was the best? That was part of it, but... but he didn't know at the time. I guess he was just testing the finished product on his patients. Mm -hmm. And But the reason behind it is being able to manufacture it ourselves. We can control the process, keep the solvents out of it. We just use a water-based, freshwater-based extraction process. Mm -hmm. And then we add the extract back onto the whole leaf plant and make a whole leaf extract out of it. So anything that's in the olive leaf you're going to get in the extract you know we're not trying to separate out the um the buzzword in this case is the oliuropin <clears throat> oh wait okay now this is another one how did you say that again oliuropin oliuropin and we'll test you at the end of the show <laughs> oliuropin was a term that was coined about 30 40 30 years ago um this was by uh Merck was looking for the cure for virus viruses okay and they took uh, olive leaf extract, took out the oliuropin, and then took it down to this elenoic acid, which was what they believe was the active ingredient in order to kill the viruses. Mm -hmm. And it, it cur killed everything in the test tube, but didn't kill anything when they tested it on human subjects because it was an unstable compound. So we decided we'll just make the olive leaf extract 
the simplest way without separating or using chemicals or forming other compounds and just make it into a whole herb kind of compound. What seems it, to be the pattern here with a lot of things that you guys have is more whole food, the whole plant. Yeah, exactly. Or parts, parts of the whole that we really need. And in, in the health of the food industry, you've got the school of thought that says the whole plant is the strongest versus the ones that say the standardized extract. And the way, way you standardize something is by using alcohol or some solvent. Now we have some pictures here uh, relative to, now let's see what, let's see what we have. Now where are we here? This is on our farm, and that's a picture I show once in a while. That's our tractor. Now, you drive that tractor? Do you drive it? I can drive it, but I, I really don't work on the farm, um, but I can drive that tractor. I bet that's fun. Okay. It's a 1950s version of something that we were able to resurrect and keep going. I love that. Matt, if you see that little white shirt up in the tree on the top of the ladder, that's one of our fellows trimming the leaves off of an olive tree. I and thought you were going to say that was you. Okay. No, 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 no. No, they'll put me on the Discovery Channel for that one. <laughs> but what we're doing is one, one time every three years, we'll trim the leaves off the tree and, and trim it down so that the olives will grow back faster. So you, it's like, kind of like a rose bush. Yeah, it's like a weed, really. Uh -huh. If you look around there, there's no irrigation. It's just dry dirt. And if you, if you take care of the olive tree, it gets its own water normally if it rains once a month or but, twice a month. But year. I think you had mentioned before to me that cutting back the olive tree is kind of like cutting back a rose bush that makes it grow. Exactly. Okay. If you just let it, leave it grow on its own, eventually it'll stop producing oh, fruit. okay. All right. And th that's a grove of olive trees that we work during the wintertime. Mm -hmm. we, we normally cut the leaves right after December, after the uh, olives are harvested. That's the time when you then go after the leaves on one third of the trees. Okay, all right. Is that it? No, there's oh. more? Okay. And the leaves are brought back to a warehouse out near the farm where we have to separate the leaves off of the branches and mm -hmm. off the twigs because even though the twigs themselves are antimicrobial, as antimicrobial as the olive leaves and the bark and the roots themselves, it it's a lot harder for our machines to process. It's a lot easier to get at the extract through the leaves. Well, that makes sense. It really does. Uh, we're going to take a break and come back to continue our conversation with Richard Lentz. Hey, Martha. So how are you? Have you heard? Heard what? Seagate just came out with an all-natural bye-bye diaper rash formula, a spray with omega-3s that is safe and effective for my little one. You're right, Barbara. He looks much happier now. Work for your Leon too. Buy Seagate products at your local health food store or contact us direct. Welcome back. We're talking with Richard Lentz from Seagate about olive leaf extract. But I gotta say that commercial <laughs> is so cute, the little New York accent. So how are you? you know, <laughs> how are you doing? If this show ever plays in New York, they won't get it. That's the <laughs> That's funny part. Right. What's wrong? <laughs> what are you talking about? No, but you're originally from New York. Yeah, I, I can do it because I grew up in Brooklyn uh, when I was a kid. And those commercials that people are seeing, those were all done by my son, Evan. Uh, um, the latest one, he's in college now and he's doing filmmaking and uh, graphics productions. But he started doing that in high school. and changed his major eventually because he got so interested in this kind of production work. So it, it, those kind of things were, a lot of it is his idea and his girlfriend who used to, who works in a Whole Foods health food store, they're coming up with these things and I'm just saying, well, go for it. That, you know. Sure, it works. Yeah. It makes you watch, doesn't it? Oh, how goodness. could you not? How can you not turn and listen to that? <laughs> it was so cute. Now, I understand that uh, not only does Seagate make the olive, olive leaf extract, but you go further to produce some consumer products such as throat sprays and nasal sprays from the olive oil. How did all of this come about? Yeah, well, the olive oil is actually doing the topicals. The olive leaf extract we're using to make the nasal throat, earache remedy, um, these are all the anti-flu, and these are homeopathic, so we can make more claims with them than we can the plain olive leaf extract mm -hmm. for throat irritations, for sinus congestion, for earaches even. Um, the olive leaf extract has been deadly if you take it as a encapsulated powder, so we thought, let's take it one more step and be able to apply it right on the spot. And I, in this past week, I'm here today just because I've been spraying with nasal spray and throat spray. My throat's kind of scratchy because 
I had um, had 101 fever a couple of days ago and mm -hmm. started hitting it with olive leaf extract. So I think what happens is it cut off the flu or colds mm -hmm. before it progressed and got any worse. Mm -hmm. So I'm still functioning, but I, and I decided I was going to make this show today and not cancel it. And and that's all because I'm spraying. And you use and because you, you're spraying. Everybody have bumper stickers. Everybody should spray, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I spray. Now you have a lab report relative to uh, the olive leaf. That you'd yeah, like to we, talk about? you know, when you do homeopathic products, sometimes you have to do, do a proof. And what we did was, um, this was a challenge study that the FDA kind of requires. We sent it to an independent lab and Resco lab two years ago. Mm -hmm. One million colonies of E. coli, Staph, Pseudomonas, Aspergillus were added to the spray for a 30-day testing period. And what that report, that analysis required was you take olive leaf nasal spray, send like 50 nasal sprays to the laboratory. They inoculate it with one milligram of one million colonies worth of each of those microbes. And these guys, these are these are bad microbes. Bad ones, E. coli. Bad, bad boys, because I only know that because I had some microbiology background, but all those are bad. Yeah, the E. coli, the pseudomonas, you know, these are bacteria, Correct. really bad bacteria. Mm -hmm. The staph. And the um, and and also the aspergillus That's a are mold. molds. Yes. Uh huh. Okay. The FDA only required well with the bacteria we needed to reduce it down by a factor of three zero. So we needed to get one million colonies per milliliter down to one thousand colonies per milliliter over a twenty eight day period. But it did it over a sixty second period. It so it was just it. boom. Yeah. The time it took for the lab technician to shake it up and take a sample back out and test it a second time. The aspergillus and the, candid, the candida mm -hmm. being molds, the FDA only required that we not grow these any further. We, we, couldn't, we had to prove that we weren't a media for growing. Mm -hmm. But within six hours, 99.99% of all of those were dead from the spray. I so. love that. I just love that. Well, now we have something on the table here. Now the spray, we've got some of the sprays here. Uh, explain to us what you have. Yeah, well we got the ear ache remedy, which we came out with that right around the time when the FDA and the I think it was the AMA came out and said that Mothers should not be giving kids antibiotics at the first sign of ear aches. And I'm guilty. I'm guilty. We were you know? too. In fact, being so close to the border with Mexico, when I go across the border, I could just pick up some more amoxicillin mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. give it to our kid. And I have, I wonder now whether our son, who produces the commercials, ended up having asthma at an early age as mm -hmm. a result of us giving him uh, amoxicillin whenever he had the first sign of an earache. Oh, my goodness. Um, and the throat spray was our first homeopathic product. That one we tested, and it's pretty much the same formula as the nasal spray, and it, it'll kill everything on contact. Now, homeopathic. Homeopathic. Got kind of a succinct explanation about homeop homeopathic? Yeah, home homeopathy is a special ca classification. It's treated as an over-the-counter remedy, but we don't have to go through the years and years of testing that you would normally have to do with a pharmaceutical product because the Samuel Hahnemann, who was a German back in the late 1700s, was able to prove that very small doses of homeo these remedies were very effective, had no side effects, and back in, it was around 1935, 1940, the congressional bill that created pharmaceutical products, the FDA and a number of other pleasantries that we have to deal with mm -hmm. now, also the, the authors of that bill, the congressional bill, also put in a uh, clause that it permitted homeopathy to exist mm -hmm. and that reduced the requirements for testing by the FDA because these products were at such low levels. We're actually talking about in the nasal spray one one thousandth of the strength as our olive leaf extract powder. Mm -hmm. So we're at a very low dose. So but it stimulates immune function. Is exactly. that correct? Just like allergy shots might have. That's, my, that's usually what I think about the analogy between homeopathy and how you explain that to people. So it's, it's, it's a little bit difficult to understand. However, it's just fabulous. It really is. Um, Richard, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll be right back and we'll talk some more with Richard right after this. 
Welcome back to the Health and Wellness Marketplace. I'm here with Richard Lentz of Seagate. Uh, Richard, how did you get into creating products from olive leaf? Well, olive leaf extract was our third product after shark cartilage, grapeseed extract. And truth be told, we're in an area where there's a lot of vineyards and there's a lot of olive trees. And once we determined how to make an extract using grape seeds as the original extract, it was easy. It was almost like farming. Once you're growing the first product, you already have the tractor and the knowledge how mm -hmm. to farm. In this case, once you make an extract, you can make an extract almost out of anything. Because you already have all the equipment, you might as well go ahead and just continue on creating wonderful things. Right. And, and it, as a business, too, you look around for available raw materials. We didn't have mm -hmm. to grow olive trees, and it would take 15 years to mature an olive tree. Okay. In order. So they were available raw material. We knew how to do it. The and, and also, back in 1998, when we first started processing olive leaves, there was very little in the health food industry, and, and we had a series of health food um, sales reps that were telling us, oh, don't bother with that. There's no knowledge out there. And and I was saying, well, wouldn't it be interesting to be one of the first to come out with a product and be able to educate people about it? And I had read Dr. Morton Walker's book, so I thought, if half of what he's saying is true, this stuff has got to be dynamite. Well, I think it's probably just beginning to rev up. Uh, some of our friends from the health food store have some questions for you. Let's see what they have to say. What is a good antifungal supplement, and how much do I take? A good antifungal supplement. Well, there's a lot of them. There's different ways of skin the cat. In this case, you know, olive leaf extract is one of the strongest. Um, carrots also are strong. Um, but olive leaf extract, I, I would take it after you actually start, if you know that you have a fungal problem. Mm -hmm. It's not something a lot of people take as a um, preventative. Uh, during flu and cold season, it also works as a preventative if you're going to be around people. But it's, I know a lot of people that buy our products are taking it all the time um, just as a general preventative. I don't think the strength reduces that much, but I also have a, my gut feeling is that if you're taking it 365 days a year, that that moment when you really need it and you can hit it hard at five capsules, if in answer to his question, five capsules three times a day is what I do when I start feeling sick, I have a feeling it would be less effective if you're taking it as an everyday preventative. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We're going to take another break and come back to finish our conversation with Richard. When those fungi and germs are getting you down, don't be sad. Reach for all natural Seagate olive leaf extract. Mm -hmm. When those skin germs start attacking, apply Seagate Alleviate All Natural Medicine. Buy Seagate products in your local health food store or contact Seagate Direct. Welcome back. We're talking about olive leaf as an antifungal agent. Richard, you brought in a study about that. Let's take a look at the study. Okay, this was in the journal Mycoses. Olive leaf water extract killed almost all bacteria tested within three hours. Dermophytes were killed within three days of exposure, and Candida albicans was killed within 24 hours of incubation. Okay, before you go further then, let's explain what these things are. So, um, all right, we know about bacteria. Der dermatophytes, what are dermatophytes? Yeah, I pronounced it wrong. Derm how do I say that? No, I pronounced you it did. right. You did. Did I say it right? I, oh. Yeah, I think you did. Well, I'm an expert. Well, you probably <laughs> know that one better than I do. Dermatophytes, skin, something skin-related. Yeah, yeah okay. they're just, um, these are just things that live on your skin that are parasites. Okay, and then Candida albicans. Candida albicans is a fungus, mm -hmm. which is, you know, most people when they hear Candida, they think that is the fungus, but there's a lot of different fungi or funguses out there that people are susceptible to. Olive leaf water extract, which is very similar to the extract that we were doing for the nasal and the throat sprays. Mm -hmm. In this case, it killed it in 24 hours, but in our case, it killed it, the fungi within six hours mm -hmm. and the bacteria within 60 seconds. But that, that's pretty much what holds true from these studies that we saw from 30, 40 years ago. The wash water from olive plants was killing all the bacteria downstream. Yeah, I'll, I, don't, I don't think I'll forget that story, yeah. by the way. Uh, okay, let's talk about some other antifungals. Let's talk about garlic. For example, garlic is probably the best known 
health food remedy for almost everything that's out there. If you get sick, um, you know, you take garlic extracts. We produce a garlic extract within our carrot powder because it's so strong. Uh, I take that one every day as a preventative. It has no side effects. Take two capsules a day with our carrot powder. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and I had also heard that uh, during the winter time, that over in some of the colder countries, that they act, it's a practice where families will sit down and eat, and eat, eat a garlic clove, one or two at every meal, as well as a natural, you know, popping garlic cloves. I, I like your, I like yours better, carrot and, and garlic. Well, you know, in Germany, garlic is actually a prescription medicine. They yeah. have so so controlled their health food industry. Yeah, I just I, they're kind of ahead of the game on those kind of things. What about grapeseed extract? That's also antifungal. Grapeseed extract very much antifungal. Um, also, it's great as a blood serum, anti clotting. Um, it's a it's probably we've tested this in independent laboratories. 40 times stronger as an as an antioxidant than vitamin E. 40 times stronger than vitamin E. Wow. But it's great antifungal, take one or two capsules a day. We make a grapeseed extract that's 250 milligrams. We actually were going to make a 1,000 milligram grapeseed mm -hmm. extract because we produce it ourselves. And the stores and the distributors didn't believe it because we were up against 30 and 50 milligram grapeseed e extracts. And the reason being is they, these companies buy it from distributors I mean, or from raw material brokers and mm -hmm. put it in the capsule. It's very expensive. In our case, our cost is the cost of electricity and farming costs and hauling it back to the plant and, and depreciation on equipment. So the co actual cost of putting it in the capsule, whether it's 250 or 500 milligrams, for us is pretty much the same. Now, now what about beta-glucan? Beta-glucan, am I saying that right? Beta-glucan. Okay, what, what is that? That is actually, in our case, it's, a, um, it's derived from the mayatake mushroom. Mayatake mushroom, okay. Which is a mold. It, it, it's a fungus that grows on, in, naturally. We get it from a company in Japan. This is a good mold, though. It's a good mold, okay. yeah. Actually, it's so purified, it's, it's a chemical, I mean, it's, it's a phytochemical that comes from the mold itself, and it turns out that it stimulates your immune system. I take, uh, we, we have beta-glucan that we put in um, carrot okay, so capsules. Okay, so you mix it with carrots, okay. Because there are beta-glucan products on the market that mix with um, sugars, with maltodextrin. We decided let's put it together with products that will actually be beneficial rather than sugar. And it's kind of weird. A lot of these companies sell beta-glucans for treating molds and yeasts, and they're putting it in a sugar-filled capsule. It doesn't make sense because sugar-filled capsule, sugar will feed molds. Exactly. Right? And then we also put it together with shark cartilage because we found early on that a lot of people using it with arthritis problems, having beta-glucans and shark cartilage together, were getting better results than shark cartilage alone. Okay. And, and these, that was another filler that actually was performing a function. We, don't, we, have value, we look at our capsules as having valuable space. Mm -hmm. If we're going to use it for just putting fillers in there, we're going to lose the beneficial value of having a consumer use it. Well, I think it's hard to know how much to take. How much should we take of this? What kind of dosage do you recommend? Of the beta-glucans? Mm -hmm. We have a 20 milligram beta-glucan capsule with a shark cartilage, and that one I just take one capsule a day. Uh, with a carrot powder is a four milligram. That's in a child size capsule where they can take one or two, and most small children can take it without any problem at all. Well, because really it's more like a food. I mean, the things that you have here, so you're, you're basically making this down into, a, it's a food supplement, a whole food supplement. That, that That's why it's not so dangerous. Is that correct? Exactly. There's no chemicals, no chemicals in the processing either. Okay, so out of all those, which one would you start with as a, a uh, antifungal agent? Well, if I had if you had to choose, choose, and I was, and I had fungus, mm -hmm. I would use the olive leaf extract. If okay. I was trying to prevent it as an everyday supplement, I would probably take the, either the garlic or the beta glucans. Either one would work. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and because before I, I, everybody would automatically go to garlic, and now it, it would be really nice for them to know. Let's do olive leaf first, right? We could do garlic along the way. Maybe have that as a regular preventative in our in our diets. But then olive leaf is a really good one to just kind of take as needed. I know it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, no, the garlic is a good preventative. But if you're after killing it, I would just use the uh, 
the olive leaf. Okay, very good. I love it. Well, that's all we have time for today, Richard. If you'd like to know more about Seagate and all their amazing products they offer, you can call them at 888-505-GATE or 4283 or visit the website at www.seagateproducts.com. Richard, thank you for thank stopping you. by the Health and Wellness Marketplace. And to all of you at home, thank you for visiting the market as well. We're open again tomorrow at the same time, same place, so be sure to tune in. Don't forget to tell your friends about us. I'm Laura Lewis. See you next time on the Health and Wellness Marketplace. Have a great day.